<coughs> Problem number five on 27B. A little different problem for sure, huh? Um, they give us this function with a k in it, and they give us the derivative, which is nice of them to do that. And they tell us k is not zero. Uh, the first one says, let's uh, have k equals three. So what I did was I just wrote down f and f prime with that three in there. And the first question was to, um, I don't know, where is it? Uh, write an equation for the tangent line uh, at x equals 4. So first I found the function at 4, plugged it in there, got 1 fourth. Then I found the derivative at 4, got negative 5 sixteenths. I wrote the equation. y minus 1 fourth equals the slope, negative 5 sixteenths times uh, x minus 4. Second question, set that x equals 4 this time. And then determine whether there's a minimum, a maximum, or neither at x equals 2. So again, there's my function with the 4 in it. There's my derivative with the 4 in it. So all I did was just put 4 in for k. Um, it's the derivative I'm concerned with, right? The question was at x equals 2. So I plug 2 in my derivative. 4 minus 4 is 0. So I have a critical point at 0. Or at 2, sorry. And then I just plugged in uh, 1 and 3, a number to the left of 2, a number to the right of 2, into my derivative. The bottom is always positive. Right? Of course, it doesn't even matter. So I got positive negative, which means there's a maximum point at that value. Uh, part C says find k, so there is a critical point at negative 5, which means if there's a critical point at negative 5, the derivative's got to be 0 at negative 5. So here's my derivative, right? k minus 2x over x squared minus kx. I plugged in the negative 5, and I got k plus 10 over 25 plus 5k. I'm looking for the critical points. Critical points when the derivative is 0, which is at negative 10. So also critical points, don't forget this, not going to matter in this one, but be careful. It's also critical points when the derivative's undefined, right? So when the um, denominator is zero, but uh, this is a plus sign and um, k, oh, wait a second, k, oh, sorry, that, there's a square, I lost the square, that's why, yeah, oh, no, okay. so this, um, actually, there is a critical point now that I think about it at negative five. Why did I ignore that one? Firm. Oh, because it's, yeah, the same one. So never mind. So k is, sorry, k is negative 10. Lost my focus a little bit. Uh, part D says um, let k equals 6 this time, and then we just do some partial fraction stuff. So it's now 1 over x times x minus 6. Um, a over x, b over x minus 6. a times x minus 6, b times x has to equal that 1. I let x equal 6. Um, I get 6b equals 1, so b is 1, 6. But x equals 0, I get negative 6a equals 1, negative 1, 6. So there's my partial fraction decomposition, right? It's the, it's the negative 1, 6, which is my a over x. 1, 6 is my b over x minus 6. And then I had to integrate it. Really simple integrals. They're both just natural logs. These are just constants. So I just get a natural log of x and a natural log of x minus 6. So a lot of good stuff in that problem for sure.